side. So let's go through that together. Will you come up and do it with us? Yeah. Yes, it's always good. Come on. Okay, so. Do you want to come up? Sure. Yeah, it's more fun. Okay, so if we look at it, and you can use the red one if you want that. So if we look at it, tell us about the different trends within here. Okay. okay. I don't really see it on the screen though. Yeah, totally. Do you see it? Yeah. Okay. Don't worry about, about the red. I know, just okay. like. I'll just point. Yeah. That's it. So I put the second, the. Yeah. You know, can have this if you want. Yeah, yeah I put them okay. there, there, there. Yeah. Yeah. So only want to put it. Okay. So longer term trend. What the longer term trend at? I just said was the big. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. The big bullish move. And then ripples, I just. Anywhere, I thought this was a good place to point them out because yeah, um, distribution. Yeah, all exactly. of that would be your distribution at the top there. Yeah. And medium term, what would the trend be? Would you um, say? I wasn't sure. I just the last year, for example. Yeah. So I mean, here, right? Yeah, totally. So what kind of trend would you say? Uh, quite linear. Yeah. Yeah, and topish. Yeah, so it's yeah, it looks the, medium term looks bearish, doesn't it? Yeah. yeah. And then short term, I would say the last three four weeks. Um. So it's going down, right? Yeah. And then if I showed you, I should really have the hourly charts on there. We could see kind of a bounce off there. Yeah. It's a very short term. Now the two hundred day moving average was still below it. Yeah. Mhm. Mm so that would be your major, if you like, medium term resistance. Okay. Yeah. Lovely. Very good. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so for the next one, for the next one, what have we got? The Hang Seng Index. Let's have... Will you come up? Yeah. Yeah. Go on. To go through the three trends. Yeah, go on. Come up with us. Yeah. Yes, we, we're all helping anyway. We're doing it together. It's not just you. No, because we are new. Oh, you're new? Okay, okay. That's fine. All right, we'll do it together. We'll do it together, yeah? All right, so let's have a look. The Hang Seng in dead. Now, in terms of similarity, what would you say the long-term trend is on that? Very similar in a way that you've got your lows that, um, I think I use this, the lows that we can join of these ones, yeah? These ones here. So we've got a good, what kind of trend is it? Bullish, bullish trend, exactly. Bullish. It's a good bullish trend. Medium term, medium term, yeah. bearish to topish, yeah. 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 And very short term, you actually went through, and can you see these two highs there? It actually went through there since. So medium, uh, very short term, it's trying to break higher. So it's a, it's a good exercise for you to just... You know, everyone looks at different time frames. You might be looking at, depending on the work that you do, it's a good exercise to have a look at it. Draw your trend lines and say, you know, I'm going to look at these trend lines and I'm going to stay bullish because we're above this trend line. But obviously, in your head, you know exactly what the trend is. Lovely. So, um, if I look at this, do you remember the three phases that we had, the buying increase, buying distribution? If I look at these phases, when we get to 24, in this case, 24,000 there, that's when you had your distribution. But it's very hard to catch it. It's very hard to catch. You know, the, the first phase, the second phase, it's not too bad because the market is going your way. The minute it starts turning, it's very hard to catch it because you have to have indications. You have to have more, if you like, um, if you have momentum indicators and you have signals, that will tell you, okay, maybe it's a good time to sell. Now, in this case, what's really, really important, what's happening with the trend line, can you see there, prices are actually touching it. So you're looking at it as if it does break through, then you, know, you are looking for something bearish. So you know, I always think it's good to use the trend line um, for long term for all time friends, but also just, just keep an eye on it. Sometimes it might just break it, but you don't have a full range, in which case I would see that just like as a, as a touch or a break, but I wouldn't sell necessarily. So when I say break, I want to see a full range below that trend line. Okay, so we talked about, some people were asking about support and resistance. 
whenever we think about a level, whenever we talk about a level, um, the market going a different way or maybe new highs or everything, this is what it, this is what the resistance are. And it might be something which um, holds for a long time. So resistance is at the top. It's like your ceiling. Um, but bear in mind that even though it's a resistance, it could be a resistance for a week, two weeks, three weeks, it doesn't mean you can't break it. It's just for the time being, it's your ceiling. And you could also have resistance as big round numbers. So we all remember sterling dollar when it was around 170, 180. The minute it gets to two, it's like the big psychological number, right? Two is a really hard level to break. And whenever we've broken it, it hasn't been for very long. So these are your um, big psychological top. Resistance could be a previous high. Now, on the other side of the coin, we've got the market going down, and it's trying to just form a base, and it's not actually breaking it. This would be, your, all, all of these would be your support levels. So they would be all your levels which are holding back prices from falling. So it's kind of a base. And if you're buying, you'd be, car you'd be very, very tempted to carry on buying because you're seeing some kind of base building. Um, and it's something like that. And when I talked about um, important support, for example, at the moment, um, the big numbers for sterling dollar, we've seen one of the most volatile things to trade at the moment, 132, 128 and a half. At the moment, 129.30, 128, 129.30. So the big levels would be something like initially 130, right? It's a round number. On the downside, sterling dollar, what do you think is an important psychological level on the downside? It's around 120, yeah, so it's a big psychological number. And once you see a big psychological number broken, then sometimes it triggers a big move, bless you. Sometimes it triggers a big move, a big sell-off. And also because a lot of people have alerts on numbers. Yes, exactly. Exactly, so that's so important. And also, what we're talking about is also you've got systems, systems trading, and when a psychological level, level is hit, that would actually say, okay, that's, the next psychological is level is 110, and that's quite scary because then you're looking at such huge losses. So, now as you said, look out for these numbers because they could be quite important in this case. And even dollar yen, when we talked about 100, that was a big level. Um, I think it was the dollar uh, Chinese yen when it was at seven, quite an important level and quite a lot of intervention at those levels. So these levels are really looked at quite carefully. Um, so in this case, we've got um, the dollar yen and the other one which I want to show you is the one which I was talking about before, which is the dollar, uh, yeah. Okay. So dollar yen, so if I look at this one, for example, if I look at this chart, for example, and I'd say um, longer term, if I look at this chart, and I'd say long term, what's the trend? That's slightly harder, isn't it? Because it's not clear cut. Can you see? It's not one of those either up or down or the long-term trend. If you were to look at it, what would you say? What would you say, long-term trend? Topish, isn't it? Yeah, it is topish. It's not, you know, long-term, if I look at 100 and I look at the top, which is something maybe 118 there, something like that, just under 118. So I've got eight. Halfway of that is four. So something like... Um, yeah, 100 to 160, so I've got 16, halfway of that is 8. So 108, if you like, would be my, the average there. And the market is slightly above this average there. So this kind of chart, I would say, longer term, you're right, topish, very, very kind of sideways trading. Medium term, what about the medium term? Would you say, more down, yeah? Medium term, more down. And then short term, short term, we're trying to bounce off that. Yeah. And what's interesting here is the 200 day moving average there is just around 111. Okay. So for the medium term, for us to be bullish, that's the level which has to go. 
And similarly here, okay, so longer term trend, what have we got? There? What would you say the longer term trend is? What would you say? <coughs> I mean, you could still have your trend line here, right? Yeah. yeah. It's not going up like, it's not really a sharp, nice, big rally, but it has got this trend line. Medium term looks more down, doesn't it? Medium term, you try, you know, you try to 20.5 for a few times like that. <laughs> and then shorter term, you're going up. Now, what's interesting here with that medium term moving average is you're touching it meaning your medium-term trend could be about to change. So you could have some kind of recovery over that. So when you look at all the charts, when you look at the different types of charts, um, you can choose, okay, so when you're doing your analysis, whether, whether it's something that you'll be working um, on a desk, in a bank, or something you do for yourself, you want to trade, you can choose which charts you want to use, right? So any of the systems that you've got, the Reuters, Bloomberg, um, I use ShareScope, which is also a very good system. They give you all different types of charts, so you choose the one you want. So the line chart is one line. And it's not great because I don't have enough details. If I just have one line, I don't have my open, my high, my low, my close. So line charts, they're limited, but some people like them because it's neat. It's just one line, and for them, that's enough. The bar chart is your traditional kind of charts where you have um, your open on this side, the high, the low, and the close. So that's your bar chart. And then you've got point and figure charts, which were so popular in the 1900, but now we hardly see them. And there were different types of charts where you actually use those crosses to go up and then the zero to go down and this kind of thing, and you had to buy signal that point and figure charts. Very, very popular in Japan, but now it's actually taking a back seat. The ones which are used the most, I would say, are the candlestick charts. And they date back as far back as Japanese rice traders in the 1700s. And they were made much more popular with Steve Nyson, who wrote a book about them. And what they do is, the reason why they're so popular is because if you like, it's very much like a pop-up. You can see very quickly what's happened. They've got something like, um, uh, like this, which would be, let's say this is your open and this is your close. Yeah. The fact that the close is above the open makes this a bullish candle. They call it a candle, just the shape of it. And then within that, you've got the shadow, the highs and the lows for the day. So that's how it looks. So you've got all this information. You've got the open, the close, the high, the low. You've got all this information, but it's become more visual. This right? Right? Sorry? Green, you're the candle, right? Sorry? Green, you're red, the candle, right? Yes, exactly. So a green one, as you say, is bullish, and a red one is bearish. And some of them just have um, different packages, have different ones. Sometimes it's got like a white one for bullish and a dark one for bearish. So. In any case, this is a bullish candle because you've got your open and your close and you've got your high and your low. Now, the other way around, if you actually have your candle like this and um, the market open at this level but it actually did manage to stay on this and close towards the lows, you would have your bearish candle and all of that would be um, colored in. So this is your, these are the different types of candlestick patterns. Now, what do you think happens when you have something like this, if it's something like that? What do you think happens there? So this is your high, this is your low, yeah? But the open and the close, in this case, what's happened? There's an uncertainty in the market. Yes, exactly, because open and the close, the same level. So it is uncertain because you open here, you actually go higher, you go lower, but you come back to close exactly the same level. So these are what they call doji patterns, and really important because sometimes, as you said, there's uncertainty and also maybe reversal. So it's always good to look out for them. So these are, you know, we've just spoken about that. How do you make a candle? How do you um, use it? And the different types of candles. So the open and close, bullish. Now, there are something like, if you like, I think there's something like, maybe 60 to 80 patterns, but maybe we won't do them all today. 
I think if you're familiar with, I would say, five or ten, it's enough for you to analyze your chart. So the Doja one we spoke about, um, now they've all got some, some of them have got strange names, others have got names which are quite catchy. Um, a dark cloud cover, it's a bullish candle followed by a bearish. And can you see the bearish comes across and covers it? So in a way, it's logical. The way they're written is logical. Um, and then they've got bullish engulfing. So all it is is covering the previous day's range and closing higher. So it's quite logical because, if you like, even though you made lows, you came back and you closed higher. So that's a good buy signal. You could have a good turnaround there. And then you have... Um, I was looking at this chart and I was thinking, okay, in this chart, let's try and find certain kind of um, candles within that. Now, the only thing I would say about candlestick, I use them quite regularly and they're very good, but the only thing is you have to wait for the close. So in a foreign exchange, it's 24 hours, so where is the close? So you have to define in a way and say, okay, I'm looking at this, I'm looking at this time frame. In other markets where you know where the high, low, and close are, it's a different story. So if I look at this, for example, if I look at this, for example, let's see together, let's just try and find a doji pattern. I'm going to get this, this easier. So if I want to find a doji pattern, can you see, let's see where we can find one. So August we have, down. which one did you say? The low in August. The low in August, yeah. So you've got one there with a very small body. And interestingly, it became a, a turn. Yeah, so that was, in this case, not a hesitation, but actually a turn. Now, what about, so we've seen also, there's also one. <laughs> yeah, so we've got that one here as well. Yeah, is that the one you meant? Yeah. No, I actually meant the lower ones. So, and then the low here in January, so that's a candle within a candle, and that's called a harami. Yeah, so it's a candle within a candle, and we have that here. Let's see, there's a candle within a candle. I just saw one before. This one here, yeah. Well, that's a big day. But you've got a candle within a candle, which is Harami pattern, which is also a pause in the trend. So any other doji pattern that we can identify? Yeah. Yes. So Harami stand for? A candle within a candle. So, let's say you have a candle here, for example. Let's say you have a candle like this, right? So the next day, yeah? Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter if it's, in this case, it's actually a bearish candle. The next day you have the trading within this. Ah, uh, with the yeah. bullish. Exactly. Okay. So it, it would be bullish or bearish, doesn't matter, but it's within the range. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So in candlestick, you call that a harami, but in, um, actually in bar chart, you would call it an inside day, which is quite logical, isn't it? Because you're trading, you're trading within the same range. Yeah. So it's an inside day. So which other pattern can we see here? Dark cloud cover. Let's see where we can find a dark cloud cover. So Harami, we, we understood that. That's a candle within a candle, like here, yeah? And a dark cloud cover would be something like this. Can you see you've got a bullish candle, and then you've got one coming through and covering more than halfway, yeah? So that would be a dark cloud cover. But I stick with all these, you know what's good to do? To actually print out a chart, and to check and say, okay, is there an interesting pattern here that I can see? So the ones I really want you to remember, which is useful, are, if you can remember that, doji, yeah, which is uncertainty, which we've, you know, we've gone through. Uncertainty is a cross. Engulfing, engulfing pattern. So you engulf, you cover the whole range. The harami is the opposite of the engulfing, yeah? If this is the engulfing, the haram is the opposite. It actually trades within the range, yeah? And the other one I want you to remember is the dark cloud cover. 
So obviously, if you know, if you're interested in knowing more about candlesticks, then I would definitely look it up, look at Steve Nyson book, and see, you know, would that work? But I would say that most places now have their own um, uh, packages, and most of the, I mean, whenever I've been to dealing rooms and everything, all the charts are with candlesticks, really popular. So if I look at this chart, Brand Crude, okay, let's have a look. Let's find a doji pattern. Let's see. Can you identify one? Let's see if we can just find a couple of patterns together here. So, December. okay, what date? December. Okay, 26. so December, this one, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, totally. November. Interesting, because then you had a, a pause for a long time and then a double one. So then we've got November, yes, that's it. You had the doji there. And another one to the right. And then another one to the right. Oh, this one, yeah? yeah? yeah. Very good, very good. So your doji pattern became? Uh, 15th of uh, November. So October the 15th, yes. And what kind of <coughs> pattern was that? It was, Dolphin. yeah, a doji pattern, and then you had a big down move, yeah. And then, what else do we want to see? A harami. Harami is a candle within a candle. Yeah? So, harami pattern. Let's see. The one I'm thinking of is this one here. Yeah? It's a candle within the candle. And then, if you like, it was just a bit of a pause. And then the market went down quite a lot. And bullish engulfing. So bullish engulfing means it covers the whole previous range. So which one do we have in terms of bullish engulfing here? Can we find one? Let's have a look. 11 bullish in February. The February one, let's have a look. And oh yes, this one, yeah? yeah. This one, yes. yeah, spot on, that's it. So you had your bullish engulfing followed by a doji and oh my god, this is like quite interesting. The this the one. Is as well. Sorry? The 14th. Of uh, this yes. one. Yes, that's also bullish engulfing. Yeah. Oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, no, it is. I was thinking this is actually the, the shadow, but it's not. It's just that. So that's definitely bullish engulfing. But I was looking, this is interesting. You have bullish engulfing followed by doji, and then you've got a harami. So you've got one <laughs> formation after another. The very beginning, yes. October eighth. Yes. Also, there's uh, bulls and. Oh uh, uh, yes, yeah, so October the eighth over there. So you've got after, so you've got like a bearish engulfing, haven't you? So you oh. Yeah, so it covers it. Yeah, but that's a good engulfing example. Yeah. So I really want you to do is just to have a look at them. I know there's like 70, 80 different formations. There's some really strange names. There's one, three white soldiers, three black crowds. You've got all these names. If you're just familiar with five or six of them, five to 10, then it's a really good thing to be able to use. And also you're testing it yourself. Okay, so I think we're gonna wrap up with a forecast. Now I always bring something. Okay, so the long-term trend here, what I've done here is I like to put it all together. So longer term trend on sterling dollar, if people say, well, what's your long term trend on sterling dollar? What would you say here? What's your long term trend? No, Unfortunately, no, yeah, still bearish. At what level would we change our mind? If it goes above 140, then hold on, maybe we finally got to a base and sterling is gonna be a strong currency again. So right now we have got a very long term bearish. Medium term trend, what would you say it is? Uh, bearish. bearish to flat. Yeah. yeah. Bearish to flat. The only reason why I'm saying not totally bearish is because we're challenging now, <coughs> we're trying to challenge the 200 day moving, uh, 52 week moving average. So bearish to flat. Short term, bullish, bullish to range trading. Yeah. Short term, we're trying to make a best, but it hasn't really happened. Now, now, I always finish off with a forecast because I love to just know about your forecast. I want you to have a look at this and give me your forecast in five days' time. Okay, so just very quickly, if you can just have a look at this together and just... Now, normally I've got Kinder Egg, but I'm really sorry I forgot it. 
<laughs> so I don't have the Kinder Egg uh, prize. So you're just going to have the recognition prize instead. Okay, so if you could just tell me in five days' time to two decimal places. Yes. Okay. Yeah, you can. You can just put a fucking thing on. You can use a. You can use the things that. Because everyone's pissed. Just no one talks about it. It's fucking annoying, man. Here we go. All right, and then you just have to shout out and tell me your forecast so we can have it. Here you go, guys. There we go. Oops. Okay. There you go. Okay, so because it's the end of the session, if you could just tell me what you think. Um, your forecast is at the end of the session. Okay, I need some uh, some uh, Okay, forecast. Let's have a look. Let's have some uh, sessions. Okay, what have we got for forecast? It's currently twenty seven nine four six. And I want you to tell me what it, you think it's going to be in five days' time. So it's five, if you like, five candles' time, yeah? Because it's a daily chart, but I can't tell you what it is. But five days from now, what do you think? Okay, so I need some, some forecasts here. 27,946.25 is where it is now. So five days' time, what are we going for? Interesting that it's uh, the last candle is white, yeah? Last candle is bullish and we've closed higher, so bear that in mind. Okay, what are you going for? 27,200, okay? Yeah? 27, so slightly low, a bit lower, yeah? Okay? More forecast here? 200, 500. At the back, what are you going for? 27. So pretty much where we are, yeah? Okay, so it's five days time. So it's five candles from where we are. Okay, I need some more forecast at the end there. What would you go for? Oh, just, oh we've got a very big pool. 20, okay, 20, so what's your forecast? 28. Above 28 or below? 28 what? 28,000. 28,000. But breaking it? Yeah. Okay. So t what about? 28,100. 28, 28, okay. A few more forecasts, please. 28,500. 28, 500. 500. 500. Okay. Any more forecasts there? 26,500. 26,500. Okay. Okay. I need some more then so we can compare. 27,100. 27,100. Yeah. Any more? A few more? What are you going for? 27,200, okay. Okay, so, is that it? Any more forecasts before I give you the answer? Okay, so let's just see. So what you think? So exactly, I'm I'm actually not allowed to because <laughs> I know the answer. I'm not allowed to. So have I got everyone's forecast? Any more before we just do it? Anybody else wants to? Yeah. Yeah. I've got everyone's here. Okay, so. Is that everybody's? No, you didn't give me yours. Um, <laughs> what are you going for? Uh, 
Go on. It's currently 27,946. <laughs> it's a bullish candle. Right. Yeah. So what would you like? 27,946. Do you want to go higher, lower? Higher. 28,000. Okay, so we've got a winner. It turns out that it's 28,225. So we had someone who said to me, wait, wait, we had someone who gave me 28,100. It was, hold on, and one, one of them was 28,500. So 28,100 was at the end, I think, and you were 28,500. So you are the winner. Come, you've got to come up. You've got to come up. You've got to say, well done, you've got to come up. <laughs> yeah, well done. Okay, and we always have a picture with the winner. We take a picture with the winner. You're going to be all over LinkedIn. All over LinkedIn. Ed, you're going to be in the photo as well. Yes, we want him in the photo as well. Yes. Okay. We've got a photo here. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And, and one by Regents University of London, just there. You just have to tell us why it's 28. So I tell you the only thing. You went yeah. to the solution, okay. so tell us why. It was a Why is it 28 to 225? Okay, so, I'll tell you what. Okay, the only thing I would say, obviously no one can tell exactly. So this is that. an estimate. But it's, this the, is not, the reason it's not why it was that. going to be there. No, the reason why it was slightly bullish, we still had the white candle. So we still had so that. So we have a series of white candles. That's yes. the forecast is, it's going to be bullish. Bullish, yeah. But did very well. And what's your name? Rati. Rati? Yes, Very good. Yeah, what's your name on LinkedIn? I'm going to have to have your name. Rati. And so, yeah. thank you very much. Yeah. Thank Patricia, you very thank much. You. I really hope you get the tears.